TSMC's two emitter process secrets got leaked. Why does this involve equipment suppliers? Tokyo Electron is one of TSMC's key suppliers for advanced process equipment. Even though Tokyo Electron provides the machines, most of the critical process parameters are developed by TSMC itself. These parameters are extremely important. And of course, they're exactly what competitors want to know. That's why TSMC never tells equipment suppliers exactly what they're doing, worried they might leak it to other clients, which could be TSMC's competitors. If competitors really want that info, they usually try to poach experienced engineers. But employees leaving normally can't take any data with them, only the knowledge in their heads. Plus, the Sony Minita process is so complex and divided into tiny steps. No single engineer can fully grasp the whole picture. Each person only handles their small piece of the puzzle. So even if someone jumps ship, the impact on the company should be pretty small. Tokyo Electron is both a shareholder in Rapidus and its equipment partner. Plus, Rapidus only recently completed a pilot run for Tuanmin that made a lot of people assume this leak must be tied to Rapidus. In reality, Rapidus develops its process together with IBM. And the details aren't the same as TSMC's. So even if someone got some of TSMC's parameters, they wouldn't be directly transferable to another company. On top of that, a Tsunami node has thousands of steps and is insanely complex. You can't just take a few hundred photos and call it a day. Where exactly TSMC's confidential info ended up? We'll only know after the authorities finish their investigation, so there's no need to jump to conclusions right now. To protect trade secrets, companies set up strict access controls. These mechanisms can be very tight. If a specific employee keeps logging in to view sensitive data and logs out within a set window to dodge alerts, the company can still use the rules and logs to flag potential leakers, so employees need to stay mindful of their responsibilities and never violate confidentiality agreements. That's how you prevent similar incidents. What do you think is the best way to stop this from happening again?